and the word of God says to us and the bread that I shall give you is my flesh which I shall give for life of the world the Jews therefore quarreled among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat then Jesus said to them most assuredly I say to you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you mm. whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is true food indeed and my blood is true drink indeed verse 56 he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him the title of our message, oh, thank you, Lord God, for this morning is Meat Off the Bone. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, don't let the people in your life eat the meat off your bone. Hams and turkeys and all kinds of meats and all kinds of size and the table was spread far and wide. And my responsibility for my family is I'm the carver. And I, myself, not to be boastful, but I think I'm surgical with that knife. I don't leave much meat on a bone. I know how to find it all up inside the back of the turkey. I can get the meat off that thing. We got a cousin, amen, he likes the carcass, the, the leftover bones. I said, he can come get them, but it ain't going to be much there for him. You might need to throw some extra meat because I get all the meat off the bone. I don't leave anything on the bone when it comes to carving the Christmas ham or the turkey for Thanksgiving. And some of you brothers, you know what I'm saying. You pride yourself that you get the knife and you start to sharpen it. It's almost time to eat when you hear that noise, me chopping a knife. You know it's getting close. Come on, somebody. And as I was carving the turkey and the ham and we were preparing to eat, the Lord spoke to me through his spirit and gave me the revelation that many of us in our lives, we sit like that turkey and allow people to just carve slices, taking the meat off your bone. Y'all better get with me this morning folks standing around in your life waiting to see what else they can get from you I know I'm telling the truth about it and, and they'll run you dry keep asking for money till your wallet is empty keep asking for rides till there's no more gas in the car keep asking and asking from you till you get to a point where you say I have nothing else to give you except the meat Jesus understood this feeding frenzy that the world has. The world that we live in is always hungry and always thirsty for more. Can I get a witness from someone? That we live in a world of more. We live in a world of excess that people want what they want and the world is always hungry and never satisfied. Jesus here in John 6 tells them, unless we eat of his flesh, and, and we drink of his blood. He said you have no life in you. Now, this is in the mist church of a I am teaching that Jesus is doing. That when you pick up and go back to John 4 and you read all the way through John 6, it is a litany of teachings that Jesus is doing where he told the woman at the well, I am living water. And if anyone drinks of this water, you shall never thirst again. And then Jesus goes to the disciples and he tells them, I am the bread of life. Though you may be hungry, if you eat of me, you shall be filled. Jesus in John 4 through John 6. Six is trying to tell us that there's a hunger in the world. There's a hunger in you. There's a hunger in the people in your life. And that if we just eat the flesh off of each other's bones, we shall never be satisfied. Now, I, 
I, I have to deal with the text the way it is and in that when Jesus gave them this teaching in verse 51 the Jews got indignant with him and they said wait a minute we are Jews how dare you tell us that you're going to give us the flesh to eat you see the Jews church everything in the Jewish law was against blood and the meat uh, the only time that the Jewish law allowed the people to uh, mingle with blood is when the blood was a sacrifice, teach pastor, and, and they could not even eat meats that had blood in it. If they were going to eat a meat, they had to allow the blood to drain completely out of the animal before they would even touch it. That's why even to this day, teach pastor, when you go to the supermarket and you buy your meats, your meats are all packaged nicely. All the blood has been drained out of it, and that chicken chicken looks really pretty in that Purdue package but that chicken didn't start out looking so pretty it went through a process it had to be processed before it got to the market and even some of us we take it through a process when we get it home hello somebody uh, you don't go from the pack steak to the frying pan I can't get no help in here today you wash that stuff and you clean it and you nurture it to make sure there's nothing in it. Amen. How can you tell us that we must eat of your flesh, the, the, the Jews said to him. Even the disciples called it in verse 60. They said, Master, this is a hard teaching. It's hard for us to understand who can understand what you're saying to him. But Jesus says, talking unto what I'm saying to you today, church, that unless you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, you'll have no life in you. Every first of the month, we come to church and we take of the communion. We drink of the wine and we break bread. But how many of you know when we come to the master's table to break of the communion, we're really eating of his flesh? and drinking of his blood. There is a hunger in the world. People in your life and mine, they want what they want, church. And give us, we that are charitable, we that love to give, if you're not careful, what God is saying to you today is that if you're not careful, you'll give everything you got to give and the people will still want more from you. I'm going to preach it if you don't. Because they're always feeding, they're always eating, they're always thirsty, they're always wanting what they want. And Christ is saying to us that he is the only one that can satisfy our hunger and quench our thirst. So the question, when God spoke to me as I was carving a ham and carving a turkey to get the meat off the bone was, God, why is it that we allow people to bleed us dry? Why is it that we allow people to take so much from us until they cut the meat off of the bones which are on your body? Preach, Pastor. And God gave me the revelation. He said, many of my people who are allowing people to bleed them dry, many of my children who are allowing people in their life to cut them to the bone, he says, you're doing it because you want to please people more than you want to please God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can get caught up that you love folks so much in your life. Can I preach the truth? Can I pull up into your driveway and talk to you about some things that's in your life and my life? Sometimes you can love folks so much that you don't want to see them go through nothing. Somehow their pain causes you pain. I can't get no help. Nobody in here today. You worry about them all night long if they're eating right. You worry if they're taking care of. You worry if they're taking care of themselves. You worry so much that you give everything you've got just so you can't see them suffer. God says you're giving the meat off of the very bone in your life. And if you're not careful, you're going to give so much till there's nothing left to give. Oh, speak to somebody, Holy Ghost. The meat on the bone is a symbolism of your strength. You give the meat on the bone. You give all your strength to carry someone else. The meat on the bone is your energy. You expend all your energy trying to solve their problems. And they good and grown. Somebody say good and grown. Why are you giving all your energy to solve a grown man's problem? Why are you giving all your energy to solve a grown woman's problem? They are taking the meat. Bone is 
your emotional and your mental space. Meat on the bone is your time. And God says you're giving your strength and your energy. You're giving all your resources to people who are wasteful. Ooh, hallelujah. Giving to folks who take and take and take till they take the meat off the bone. To give them that is to give them all of your strength, all of your time. Jesus is saying to us that you can't live that way because there's only so much in you to go around. There's only so much that you have to give. And if you give everything, there'll be nothing left for yourself. He says that anybody who is tired of giving the meat off the bone, come unto Christ and eat of his flesh and drink of his blood. God sent me to tell you, you are going to work yourself to the bone. If you don't reprioritize your life, who am I preaching to in here? God says, if you don't stop trying to please people, if you don't get on your knees and lift them up to God, if you don't put them on the altar and leave them there, they are going to work you to the bone. Church, we got to realize you only have so much heart space and so much mind space. You can consume yourself with worrying about other people until your mind and your heart gets overwhelmed and you can't sleep, you can't eat, and you're just wondering why won't they get themselves together. It's because they won't go to God because you have become God. Why do they need to pray when all they can do is ask daddy? Why do they need to pray when all they got to do is ask mama? Why do they need to pray when all they got to do is go to grandma? Because they know if you won't give me nothing else, you'll give me the meat. Off your bone. You and I, we can only carry so much until you start to wear yourself out. If you be honest with yourself, you're so tired, not because you are tired. You're so tired of the people that you're carrying. Ain't nobody going to talk back to me in here today. You're tired because of you always thinking and trying to help other people. God says you got to put them on the altar. Stop trying to be God to them and turn them over to God. Why do we give to beat off the bone? trying to please someone else. Jesus told the Jews, I give you my flesh and I give you my blood that you might have life and they told him, how can this give us flesh and how can he give us this to eat? And Jesus says, if you don't eat of my flesh, if you don't drink of my blood in verse 53, he said, you have no life in you. You're existing but you're not living. You're here, but you're not enjoying. Oh, praise the Lord. Not because God is not taking care of you, but you're using what God gave to you to try to take care of somebody else. The demand, my brothers and my sisters, will wear you out. The burden of carrying family, the burden of carrying friends, co-workers, all these people in my life. Sometimes I say, Lord, it cuts so deep that I feel like it cuts me to the bone. The world is in a feeding frenzy and the enemy, the Bible says, is walking to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. But God says the enemy is using some folks in your life just to devour your blessings. Oh, preach, pastor. The flesh that you and I have on our bones, it holds your identity. It's your DNA. And the problem with allowing people to eat the flesh from my bone is that when I allow them to feed on me after my resources is gone, after I allow them to attach themselves to me, they start to steal my identity. Preach, Pastor, up in here. Uh, you, you, thank you, Holy Ghost. They steal your identity. How, Pastor? When you give away who you are to become who they want you to be. You know you ain't got it, but you're afraid to say no. I can't get no witnesses here.